Factsverse presents Liza Minnelli's abandoned childhood home unfolds a tragedy just like in the movies. The house that was once the family home of Vincenti Minnelli and his daughter Liza is unrecognizable today. The Minnellis moved into the house during the 1950s, and since then, a lot has happened in the home. Liza Minnelli's abandoned childhood home, it unfolds a tragedy just like you would see in the movies. An anonymous person contacted Curbed Los Angeles, which is a comprehensive real estate website about a sprawling and neglected Beverly Hills mansion on Crescent Drive. The website didn't know much about the property, nor did the tipster. After the first time the tipster drove by the mansion, though, they drove past many more times over the next few months. When Curbed Los Angeles did some research, they found out that the house once belonged to musical movie director Vincenti Minnelli and his family. They were Hollywood royalty at one time. The house was built in 1925 and was later redesigned by the famed Hollywood Regency architect John Elgin Wolfe. Very little is known about the people who lived in the mansion before the Minnelli family bought it in the 1950s. When he purchased the estate, Vincenti was hitting new heights in his career and he was incredibly successful. Unfortunately, his private life was not going as well. It was actually becoming more and more tumultuous. About 10 years before Vincenti and his family moved into the Beverly Hills mansion, his directing career was really taking off. He signed with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer in the 1940s, which is what helped build his career. After completing his first film, Cabin in the Sky, in 1943, he made a name for himself. The next year was a very pivotal time for Vincenti, both professionally and personally, when he started his next major project, Meet Me in St. Louis. On the set, he fell for the film's leading lady, Judy Garland. A year later, they were married. Their lives changed the day their daughter was born. The wedding took place in June 1945, and on March 12, 1946, their daughter, Liza Minnelli, was born. Right after she was born, Liza became the center of her parents' world. From the outside, the family seemed to be the perfect Hollywood family. On the inside, things weren't as great. Vincenti's professional life continued to flourish as he created amazing movies for MGM. Unfortunately, his married life wasn't doing as well. Judy was suffering from depression, anxiety, and substance abuse, and it was very well known. It was even the topic of an article in The New Yorker. Sadly, Judy's problems were tearing her family apart. While Judy was drowning in her mental health and substance abuse issues, Vincente had only two priorities. First, he loved his work. Second, he loved to dote on his daughter Liza. According to Judy, this left no time for her. As things got worse for Judy, she was released from her contract with MGM, and that only made things worse for Judy Garland. She tried to take her own life after that twice. By 1950, just five years into their marriage, things were falling apart. When Judy was released from MGM, she was at the lowest point in her life. Her unhappy marriage wasn't helping, and that led to her having an affair with businessman Sidney Luft. This ended the couple's marriage for good, and they were divorced in 1951. While this was a difficult time for Vincenti as well, he found great success in the same year, which eased the pain that he felt when the marriage failed. Shortly after the divorce, he won his first Academy Award for An American in Paris. It was then that he moved into the Beverly Hills estate. Back then, the mansion was very impressive. It looked nothing like what it looks like today. The mansion was located on Crescent Drive, and it spanned 5,900 square feet. There were 19 rooms in the house, with six bedrooms, six bathrooms, a formal dining room, and more. He moved into the mansion with his second wife, Georgette Magnani, and they were living the life of A-listers. According to an article published in the Los Angeles Times decades later, there were large dressing rooms in the house and many rooms dedicated to mementos from Vincenti's many movies. He wanted the home to be perfect for his beloved daughter, Liza, and he did his best to turn it into her dream house. When Vincenti and Judy divorced, Liza spent half the year with her mother and half the year with her father. Vincenti took every opportunity he could to dote upon his daughter. It's been reported that every year he commissioned new outfits for Liza, and no expense was spared when it came to her. He also hired state and film artist Tony Duquette to design a large playhouse for Liza. 
he had it placed within the estate's 42,500 square feet of land. At the time, things were going great for the director. He had plenty of money. Liza grew up in the mansion, and it was the place to be for other kids her age as well. Actress Candace Bergen remembers going over to the house where they would play dress-up. Vincenti would have a designer copy the costumes from famous leading ladies in MGM films and scale them down to fit a six-year-old. This gave Liza an incredible wardrobe to play dress-up with. Unfortunately, Vincenti's career was flailing, and he was no longer considered to be an in-demand director. By the late 1960s through the early 1970s, Liza had moved out of the home and Vincenti had moved on to his third wife. At this time, his funds were dwindling and his house took a hit. By 1976, Vincenti had directed his last film. With his career over, he could no longer afford the finer things in life. Many of his friends noticed that his house on Crescent Drive had changed quite a bit. While things were going horribly for Vincenti, things were going great for Liza. She had just won an Academy Award for Best Actress for her role in Cabaret. According to many reports, Liza came to her father's rescue. It's believed that she made several mortgage payments so that Vincenti wouldn't lose the house. By the time Vincenti was 83 years old, he was still living in the house but now with his fourth wife, Lee Anderson Minnelli. At the time, he was not well. Because he was ill, Liza went back to the Crescent Drive home to be close to him. She was only there for a few days before flying off to France for a scheduled performance, and while she was gone, Vincenti passed away. This led many to wonder what would become of the Crescent Drive estate. When Vincenti's will was read, his love for Liza was again proven. He left the house to her, but there was one stipulation. The $1.1 million estate was Liza's and he wanted to leave $100,000 to his last wife, Lee. He also wanted to be sure that Lee would be able to live in that house for as long as she liked. At first, the arrangement worked well for both ladies, but over time, things changed. By 1999, Vincenti had been gone for 13 years. Just as his will instructed, Vincent's widow, Lee, was still living in the Crescent Drive mansion. She was living there alone. That year, Lee was profiled by the Los Angeles Times in the house and the interviewer got a glimpse into how the house had aged. According to the reporter, Lee changed nothing in the home. It was almost like a time capsule. His paints and easels remained precisely where Vincenti had left them in his dressing room before he died. In 2002, the utterly unchanged house was put up for sale by Liza, and Lee sued the actress. When Liza decided to sell her childhood home in the year 2000, she started quietly looking for a buyer. She finally sold it in 2002, but now that the house no longer belonged to Liza, what would Lee do? According to Liza, her father left her the house and asked that if she chose to sell it, that she would find a place for Lee to live. When Liza found a buyer for the home, she knew that Lee needed to be looked after. Honoring her father's wishes, Liza offered Lee a $450,000 tax-free condo. When Lee heard about the sale of the house and the offer of a condo, she responded by suing her stepdaughter. In her lawsuit, Lee claimed that Liza had the electricity turned off, that she dismissed all groundskeepers, and that Liza's neglect of the home led to Lee suffering from embarrassment, humiliation, worry, and extreme stress. She refused Liza's offer for a beautiful new home and claimed that after Liza got married and feeding 850 of her closest friends a 12-foot cake, she went off honeymooning all over the world she says that during that time, she was alone in a cold, dark house at the age of 94. Just a month after she filed the lawsuit, she withdrew it. Liza and Lee worked out their issues without going through the courts. Lee was able to stay in her late husband's house, and the lawsuit delayed the sale of the house. The house officially sold in 2004, but the new owners couldn't take possession of the home until Lee died or left voluntarily. By the time escrow closed in 2006, Lee was 98 years old. At the time, Liza was paying Lee's rent to the new owners. Lee finally died in 2009, and the house was no longer Liza's responsibility. Also, she didn't have to pay any more rent, and that would allow the new owners of the home to move in. In 2006, Beverly Hills real estate agent Sheila Rose told the Times that although Lee was alive and living in the house, the new buyers would eventually move in and refurbish it. 
When Lee died, everyone was sure that a major remodel would begin. For some reason, though, it never did. The person who alerted curbed Los Angeles mentioned that there were torn drapes in the upstairs window. It was evident that squatters had been staying in the mansion. Much of the trash in the house was recently left there. There were some reminders of the glamorous home that Liza grew up in, but it's clear that those days were long gone. According to Lee's initial lawsuit, the groundskeepers were dismissed, and whether or not it was true is unknown. However, the new owners never hired anyone to care for the yard. This negligence resulted in a disaster. There are piles of debris all around the yard, and the columns are crumbling. The pool that was once luxurious and filled with crystal blue water is now empty, covered in graffiti. The walls inside the house are also covered with graffiti. The walls are full of holes. Many belongings were still in the home, but most of it was destroyed. The question on everyone's mind is, where are the owners of the house now? Enough time has passed that a renovation should have already begun, but instead the house has been neglected and is now far from the home of Hollywood royalty that it used to be. Inside the home are plenty of amazing artifacts from the time that Vincenti, Judy Garland, and Liza all lived in the house together. Since the new owners have possession of the house, everything inside is theirs. They could be sitting on a treasure trove of pieces of Hollywood history, but instead have ignored the house and its contents, leaving it behind for squatters to take or destroy. Today, it is a far cry from what it once was. Subscribe for more!